everybody welcome back to my let's play right where we left off i just finished clearing this area and it's really pretty i can't get over how pretty the graphics are sometimes i find it really ironic with a lot of modern games that people boast about the Hold graphics up. and yet and yet they boast yeah. some of the most kind of drab looking you know gray they don't have very many colors and i remember you know kind of older games so i have to great another stealth mission a lot of games when i was younger i'm gonna say mid to late 90s so when i was a kid about you know a teenager they were a lot more colorful than the games i see in modern time and i think that has a lot to do with realism but i don't know i, I like looking at bright vibrant games i you know i appreciate the nitty gritty you know the gritty reality that some game designers want to portray and that's fine but sometimes I just like a really pretty game. I guess that's the really girly side of me. So, I think these guys are pretty much not going to move. And even though I'm kind of destroying this guy, this other guy is just very preoccupied with looking at his crotch for some reason. I don't know what it is, but that's fine for me. That's quite alright. So as I'm going through this game, I'm kind of asking myself... In terms of a sequel, which by the way, I just heard recently that they delayed the they delayed Uncharted 4, which means if if previous announcements are still true that you about this place, were you? that the The Last of Us 2, the announcement of that game, if they're considering which which I think they might be most like more more likely than not then that announcement's gonna get delayed. But, what would you guys want to see in a sequel to this game? I'm, I'm kind of like thinking about that question as I'm going through this game, and I, I really like this game a lot, especially for a modern game. I know that sounds like a, a disclaimer, and that's because it is, but in terms of what would I want to see, where do I think they could improve? Well, first of all, I think the story, I think the story is absolutely fantastic. The writers did an amazing job of really making you feel for these characters. Like, they're really complex. It's not kind of one-dimensional. And I, I talked about this before. And there's no really overly annoying character, which is good. That's actually a compliment to them. That just shows you that they know how to make a complex character, which is really, really great. So... But you know what, I'll probably reserve the story question for a later video. I don't really, I feel like if I start discussing that I might spoil too much. For those of you that are playing along, I don't want to, I don't want to kind of jump ahead too much. But so, that leaves gameplay for now. And I like a lot of the elements in this game. I like the fact that it mixes it up a lot with the stealth and with the action sequences. Sometimes you just have to, you just have to go for it. And this area, by the way, actually has a mix of clickers and regular enemies that's always the most challenging that's always the most challenging group of enemies because if obviously if a runner sees you and they can see then the clickers will immediately just kind of pounce on your location so that always makes for an interesting challenge i don't know how many there are in total here but i'm just gonna go ahead and see See, I just realized there was another enemy up there. So in terms of the gameplay, I like the mixture. Even though stealth is my... Stealth is kind of the thorn in my side, I still like it. I, I always want to like challenges. One of these days I'm going to get really good at stealth. I mean, for crying out loud, I need to... I need to... Oh, whoops. I need to figure it out because I definitely want to do a Metal Gear Solid Let's Play. One of these days. One of these days. And by the way, I actually, um, I was thinking about doing a shout out video, kind of a separate one, but I may as well do it on here as well, um, cause somebody did it, somebody mentioned my name in one of their let's plays, so, just wanna thank everybody, by the way, just, you know, I'm always grateful every step of the way, just thank everybody, really, for, for watching, you know, and, I'm always looking for new games to do Let's Plays on and new ideas, that sort of thing. So, you know, by all means, don't be shy. I always like to keep an open ear with everything. Because I always feel like there's always ways... 
to improve there's always places to do aspects that you can improve on aspects you can do better in so there you have it so in terms of the gameplay what would i want to see return and is there any room for improvement for a potential sequel like i said i like the mixture of the action and the stealth i really also like the whole crafting of makeshift weapons like the nail gun n nail bomb excuse me nail bomb like the molotov cocktails i really like that a lot i guess one thing i would say is definitely keep that and see if you can expand upon it expand upon it in a way that makes it still challenging but maybe make more different more of different kinds of those um weapons and maybe i would almost say diminish the power of the nail bombs i can help you kill some of these The, diminish the power of the nail bombs and the I don't know if you can the Molotov cocktails too just to make it a little more challenging they probably do that in the harder difficulties anyway although I have played the game on the on the difficulty level above normal which I think is hardened I, I played it and beaten it was def it was definitely noticeably more difficult so I can only imagine what survivor mode is. I think that's the higher that's an even higher difficulty level. I don't know. I saw about a good four or five difficulty levels in the beginning of the game, so that's pretty intimidating. That is very 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 intimidating. And okay, you know what? I will go back to the story. So no spoiling anything that's coming up here. I have beaten the game so I know how the game ends, but I won't I won't say that here. But a question could be, well, would Naughty Dog wanna would Naughty Dog want to focus on other characters? Remember, back in the beginning of the game, you start off with Joel and his daughter Sarah, and then it jumps twenty years ahead. So that's twenty years between what we saw as the very beginning, kind of the beginnings of the apocalypse, at least in the area where Joel was, Texas, I think it was versus 20 years later which is this time so lots of stuff has happened this game i think i mentioned this before but this game reminds me of gears of war in the sense that there's a lot of there's kind of a lot of backstory that you hear a bit about in the games but i feel like there's such a rich universe in this game like you know it would it would be interesting to see about a little more about the fireflies history a little more about what the military did. Tess, in one of the earlier parts in the game, mentions how they attempted to bomb the cities, or bomb the outside, bomb outside of the city, something like that. It's tied on the other side. Okay, so we're somewhat stuck what here. Going through here. Want the doggy door? This actually, I don't know why, but this part, this is such a minor detail right here where Ellie is crawling through. It reminds me of the part in Resident Evil 2. That figured a lot into that game. Sherry would oftentimes crawl through little vents or little, like, doggy doors. Similar type of thing. So I just, I don't know if that's... I, I doubt that's a reference. I think that that's just such a basic thing. I don't think that that's like, oh, that was inspired by Resident Evil 2. I don't think it's one of those things, but I don't know. It just reminded me of that. So, as they mentioned earlier, there are clickers here. And so I'm going to try to see what I can do. Multiple clickers in and out of the house. You see at least one here. I think there's another one roaming about. So, it, do we want to have a... Do we want to have a game that follows maybe a Firefly, for example? Do we want to have a game that follows a military personnel, a military person? I don't know. There's, but there's so many possibilities, and I don't know if they're gonna release other DLC for this game. It doesn't sound like it. Maybe they might. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But I guess that's so. Like I said, the rich aspect of the story 
reminds me of Gears of War. Gears of War is a lot like that because there's a lot of different aspects, there's a lot of different people, and, you know, kind of factions of people, that sort of thing. There's a lot more to the story than the game, th than you get from the game, is, is definitely what I have to say. And I'm getting vibes like that from The Last of Us as well. So, I think to help kind of address that, there were some novels that were written for the Gears of War game series, and they kind of really, really added to the story. They there were some moments, there were some moments mentioned in Gears in Gears of War that were just kind of moments that turned out to be really, really significant parts in that game's history. And yet, it's just oh, you hear one word about it, and you're just like, okay, uh, yeah, I don't know. And by the way, I said I mentioned earlier that I'm going to really make use of this bow and arrow. In previous let's no, excuse me, not let's please in previous playthroughs of this game, I really didn't use it as much as I should have. So now I'm trying to correct that because it's a really good weapon and it's quiet, and you can reuse some of the arrows, not all of them, as I mentioned before. So that's that makes that weapon really beneficial, especially especially as I upgrade it more and more as the game progresses. So I know that The Last of Us actually did have a comic. I don't know if it was a series or an individual comic that went into a part of this story that was also explored in the DLC. Maybe one of these days I'll play that DLC. And I think it's called, is it called Left Behind? It's not called Left for Dead, that would be something completely different. <laughs> Left for Dead. There's a the game. And interestingly, interestingly enough, these clickers here, they remind me of an enemy in the second Left 4 Dead game. Just the way they look. They they don't operate the same way. But there's something about the way they look. Very skinny. I think they're female. Uh, the more I look at them, I don't know. They kind of have female... Sort of... A female sort of... Vibe. Right. Whoops. I have no idea if this thing's... I'm still going to try to do the stealthy approach. Now that I have this additional arrow, I'm gonna try to get this. I'm gonna get you, sucker, as they say. Okay, that worked out just as well as I had hoped, which is always great. And by the way, I am... Uh, and besides, with this bow and arrow, I'm just trying to channel my inner Daryl Dixon. Like any good person, like any good fan of a zombie apocalypse. Alright. So I'm tr I know there's more enemies in the house, so I'm going to continue to kind of use this strategy, use this approach, and deal with them as well. So I like, as I said before, I like the crafting aspect of it, and I like the action aspect of it. If there's one thing I could change, because there's always room to improve with anything, I don't know, what would it be? Hmm. I I guess the only thing I would say is let's get more into the story. I want to I want to know more about the story. That kind of thing. So that that would be interesting. I would definitely say if a game series is worthy of additional graphic novels, it would definitely be this one. Gears of War has a total of 5. There's like 5 books in total. I think that's all they came out with. I don't think that there were any additional books written. And like I said, they covered they covered a lot of events only briefly mentioned in the games and they kind of covered different different moments or different events between games to explain certain things. And I think it really helped a lot. I kind of I was able by the time the third game came out, the third it was originally going to be a trilogy for Gears of War, and it turns out that there was an extra game that came out, which I didn't like that much. Judgment? Ugh. Did not like that game. I, I played it a little bit, but I just could not get into it. I, I mean, to be fair, I only played the campaign. I don't know how the multiplayer stacked up compared to the previous installments, but I just really could not get into Judgment whatsoever. But anyway, the I found that the reading the books while playing the games because the some of the books came out before even the second and third games came out i think 
I think they really helped a lot. I think, th and they are, like I said, they are canon. There are certainly some books that are not canon with their respective game series, like Resident Evil is a good example of it. They're interesting reads, and I like the approach, kind of the perspective that the author has. Some of the games, so, excuse me, some of the novels that she wrote are kind of a retelling of particular games themselves. Whereas there are about two or so novels that explain things that happen maybe between games, kind of unique events that she came up with that are not considered canon, but they're also, you know, they're kind of interesting things to, to think about. So I like that as well. I, so I like either approach, whether it's canon or not. Hey, as long as I get to read and get exposed more to a particular game series that I really like, I'm all for it. You know? Definitely the, and I also read Par Parasite Eve is also definitely a good, a good novel. I have to say that was one of the only novels where I literally felt disgusted one time while I was reading it. I mean, for those of you that have not played Parasite Eve, I would strongly recommend it. But you know, you have to be a retro gamer. You you have to appreciate that because you know it's an old game, and the graphics may not have aged as well as. They could have... Okay, so the area is fine and clear, and I could go that way, but as usual, I'm just gonna make sure. I don't want to run out of supplies, so I just want to make a quick, kind of a quick sweep of the area. Make sure I've picked up everything that I could, and then we can move on to the next... to the next chapter in our adventure. But Parasite Eve, I just remember, I liked it because it had a lot of biology in it, and I studied biology, so I could kind of grasp it. And the, so the author really knew his stuff. You got friends in town? No. Although I got some idea who might have come through here. So here's another house, and I think there's a lot of... on the other side of this house. Let's get inside. I think there's a lot of items in here that I could pick up so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and kind of I think it might be a good time to stop the video after I've explored a little bit so we'll do that Ooh, there were kids living in here yikes that's always rough kids in the apocalypse you know all right so there's a few other things and that's another thing I hope so if the last of us 2 comes out I hope they continue capping the amount of raw supplies, simple supplies that you can pick up because that makes the game challenging. Otherwise, you, you'll be like, you'll be farming, I don't know if farming is the right word, but you'll you'll be able to have like 50 Molotov cocktails in your, in your inventory and that's just going to make the game way too easy, you know. I've seen too many games. People accuse them of being too hard, and then they make adjustments to the following game, the sequels in the game in the game series, and then it should make it just makes everything way too easy, which is absolutely ridiculous. So, I think I'll let you guys finish looking at that, and I think it might be a good time to stop the video. So I'll see you guys next time.